Hello friends and welcome to A Shot of Code. Today we're going to be looking at creating a web component in Angular. Now this follows on from last week where we used Vue. Uh, if you want to see that video, uh, put a link to it here. No need to, they're, they're, very, they're very separate videos. Uh, as I say, yeah, today Angular, let's, uh, let's jump in. Okay, so first thing um, is I'm going to be using the Angular CLI to create this. Um, there's quite a bit more ceremony in putting together an Angular component compared to Vue. Um, so it's not much fun. So let's use the um, let's use the CLI. So I'm going to do an ng new and I'm going to call it button and I'm just going to give a prefix of custom. And this may take a couple of seconds, so I might just speed this bit up. Um, do we want routing? No, we don't need routing and just normal CSS. Uh, so we'll just let this install. And we're back. Okay, uh, let's clear that and um, CD into that directory. And then we'll open up Visual Studio Code and see what we've got. So in here, we've got our source. Uh, which has got our main.ts, which is part of the bootstrapping. And then in app, we've got module, which again, we're using the bootstrap. And then our component. Uh, I'm actually just going to get rid of this component to start with. Um, and we'll add a new one in. So we'll do ng -g component. Uh, and we'll call it button. And we'll say um, inline style. And inline template and native for the encapsulation. Uh, so it might skip this, this takes a couple of seconds as well. Oh, no, that is quick today. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so back in we go. What have we got? So we've got a button in here, and it's simply going to put button works up on the screen. All very nice. Now, current setup we've got does not work as a web component. It will only work within a, uh, an Angular app to make this a web component and therefore enable it to be used in a vanilla JS or a Vue or a React or any other framework. Uh, we need to wrap it in um, Angular elements. When I say wrap it in, uh, we need to use Angular elements and that is going to provide the wrapping functionality for us. So look at that, that add in this moment. This one does take a couple of seconds, so I'll speed this bit up. And we are back. Okay. Let's see what that's done for us. Well, it's not done much. It's added that package and the dependencies. But that is going to enable us now to come into app module and make some changes. Now, I've got rid of that component. That can go. Um, and so it can go from declarations as well. Now, what we're going to do, rather than bootstrap this, we're going to um, let the browser take more control. So Angular isn't going to be booting up um, more, more the browser. If that makes sense. Entry components is what we need to specify rather than bootstrap. And this will be our button component, uh, which we've got here in declarations as well. Right, so with this done, it's not going to start up at the moment. We need to make a few more changes. So in here, we need to add a constructor, and it's going to take an injector. like that and I'll just get that added okay so we see that added in up here now um, now we're going to use uh, a method from our newly imported angular element so let's import it we're going to use um, create custom element and that is from angular elements so in here, I'm going to say const button equals create custom element. And I'm going to pass in my button component. And I'm going to pass in this constructor injector parameter. OK, and with that in place, we can now use the web components, well, the custom elements API. So we can do custom elements.define. 
And our new HTML element is going to be custom button. And we just need to pass in button, which is the return from our create custom element. So basically, this is going to wrap our button component and turn it into a web component. That allows us to make this standard call um, and create that component. One more bit of ceremony. We need to an ng do bootstrap here. And that should be good for changes in here. One thing to note, uh, that I, I, I'm always forgetting when I'm doing this, is I'm going to run this in Chrome, and Chrome is using version 1 of the Web Component spec, which means it can't be in ES5, it's got to be in ES6. And Angular is using TypeScript. So let's go into um, the TypeScript config. And say the target is not ES5, it's actually ES2015. That should help out there a bit. Um, and while we're here, let's let's do a, let's add a couple of things in as well. So let's add a property in here. So we can do that with um, at input, and we'll just have a name property that is uh, say mark by default. Well, let's just say mark. So by default, it's mark. Okay, and then also let's add some styles in. Um, well, I've got this. I've got this property, so I need to be able to see it. So let's let's put that in here. Actually, so let's do a h3 and just put the name property in there. Um, and then in our styles, let's style h3 and just give it a background color of orange um, so this is uh, similar to what I did in the view test we just want to be able to show that we can um, have properties set and that we can have styles set and the styles don't leak out into the um, um, external DOM and and yet yeah, those two things right so if I save that off our component should be looking pretty good um, Okay, right, I'm just going to go and grab um, some NPM scripts to help with the building of this. Be right back. Let's go into um, our package.json and I'm just going to paste in these scripts. So I've got, well, let me just tidy them up and then I'll talk about them. And one of them is build, so we get rid of that build there. Okay, so I've added three here. Um, we've got the first one is build, so it's just gonna use the Angular CLI, it's gonna do a production build, and I will have no output hashing on, uh, mainly because of this next step where we just want to concatenate the four files that are made and put them into one file called elements. Um, and that's that's this would have to change every time we add hashing on. Um, so I just need to update this folder to button. And I know we've just got a simple serve here using HTTP server um, and allowing gzips because we're going to gzip this here. Right, let's try and give that a build, I think. So we can do um, npm run build. And this will take a few seconds, so I'll speed this bit up as well. Okay, so the build looked good there. Um, what I can do now is an npm run package. And that just gets us our one elements file here that we can import. So if I come back in and just come up into the roots here, there's our file. Um, now to test this, I'm just gonna create an index.html on the root here and I'm going to place our custom button. Um, so you can see we're not we're not um, using um, like in a normal Angular application. We're not specifying a tag that Angular is going to uh, hook into. This is a tag that is going to use the 
um, custom elements defined class um, in that standards way. Uh, we just need to include our scripts now. So we'll have script source and uh, elements.js. And that's all I think we need to do in there. Now do um, an npm run, npm run serve. I think is all I need to do. And we go on to localhost 8080. Right, what have we got? We can see our button works text here. So let's just bring up our components. So there's our butters button works. That's good. And then we've got the name uh, of Mark, good, and the background color of orange. Okay, so our component is working. It's working as a standard web component. We could use this anywhere we like. Um, just to prove, well, if we come in here and look into DevTools and click on this guy, then when I drill down, you can see we've got a shadow root, so it's created that successfully for us. That's great. That means if I now have a head three in here, a H3, then even though we've done a, a H3, you know, all H3s were styled to a background of orange. Um, when I have one in here now, it's not going to be affected because we're in the shadow DOM where that style was specified and so it's not going to leak out. Um, and then I should also be able to um, specify properties. So let's say name of John instead of Mark. Give that a save. And yep, that is updating. So our properties are working as well. So, you know, definitely not as easy as a view component. It took me a while to, to work out how to do that. Um, I was following um, a couple of blogs, so I, I'll paste in a, a link to the blog. Um, you know, with both of those, you should hopefully do it a lot quicker than, than it took me to, uh, to get that going. Uh, but there you go, um, web components in Angular. Oh, just one last thing, the, the size, the size is 62K gzipped, it's, it's big. Um, I think that, you know, that is because we include the whole of Angular in that single element. Um, hopefully at some point there's the possibility to split it out like Angular was letting us do, like, um, sorry, like Vue let us do. Um, otherwise if we create another component we're going to have some big, big downloads there. Um, yeah, so I'm sure that's coming up. I think I've heard of that. That is coming in the pipeline as well. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Hope that was enjoyable. Um, if you want to see the next one, I'm hoping to try React next, uh, then click on that subscribe below. Um, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. <laughs>